Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taya and this is Papagayu, my jungle core island. When I was planning this island, I had my husband actually help me with some of the planning and some of the ideas for this island. And the one thing that he said was a jungle grotto and I just kind of ran with it. I'll show you on screen right now, pictures of the map that we kind of planned out together, like a little lake coming right off of this river inlet so that it has like this little protected cove. We're gonna make it very lush and dense. I kind of wanted Flora's house to be in the little grotto because she's kind of like a peppy villager and I have a feeling that she'd want to be like in a little cool nook. Let's, uh, let's get into it guys. So the first thing I had to do was mark out my little grotto kind of lake area and I was planning out these stepping stones first because I've never done stepping stones before and I didn't want them to feel like very repetitive or like they went in a straight line so I was kind of trying to make them so they felt a little bit more natural. Some of them have two spaces between, some of them have only one space between, so it makes it feel a little bit more fun when you're jumping across. This won't be the only way that you can access Flora's house. There is another walkway, I kind of make like a little entrance on the left hand side of the lake, but I did want to have a fun hop spot just in case. And you can also get some really nice pictures from standing in the middle of this little lake too, so it's kind of cute. And I do check back in like quite frequently on the map because the map that I designed, I actually put the house a lot closer to the beach. Um, but in real life, it's a little bit in real life. <laughs> when you actually are making something in the game, it's kind of hard to make a map and then just stick to it like religiously because um, things change and I wanted this lake to be a little bit bigger than what I had planned out in my original map. So I'm just looking at it here and I'm noticing that it's very like vertical feeling. So we're gonna go back and make it a little bit wider. And also that the stepping stones look a little bit repetitive. So I'm just trying to change those up a little bit too. So after all this little additional adjustments, I'm checking back at the map again and noticing that uh, it needs to be a little bit wider still. However, I do end up taking away some of this width too. It's kind of difficult. I mean, that's why it's better to just start making something because if you think about it too much or you try to plan it out too much, it's better just to see how it's gonna look actually in the game. And I wanted to have a little water feature, waterfall area on the right hand side here. So I'm building that up and marking out where I want the house to go. And I'm using the lines on the map to kind of signal where I'm going to be putting the house. And I realized that I actually had it below the one marker line instead of above it. So I'm taking away some of the lake again and some of the side even, just shrinking the whole thing down a little bit and then I'll have enough room to add in the house because I don't know that incline in the back there I was thinking that I actually could use that incline because I will have my house up on this level that I'm going to create in a second here. Right above this grotto will be the resident representative's house. So it might be cute to keep that incline because that was the first incline that I placed on Papagayu. It's the only incline on Papagayu actually. <laughs> so yeah, now we're getting into building up the back half of the cliff and I'm just going to show you me marking out the front part of the cliff and I'm going to cut out a lot of me just filling in the back portion of the cliff because I do build it out quite a few tiles back so that I have enough room to work with for decorations and also this plateau that I'm creating is going to be a major structure in the end it's going to continue back quite a while and that's where my house will go on the second level on that right up there so yeah, I do make a little pass through between Flora's house and this cliff on the left hand side. And of course, I had to push him out of the way. <laughs> At least he stood up like right when I was right there and I didn't have to leave it undone because that's the worst. 
But yeah, now I'm happy with the lake. I just have to do a couple more adjustments with this little pokey bit, and I'm happy with the shape of the lake. And on the map that I designed, I had this area completely enclosed, but I really like having a little gap right there where I just broke away the cliff and having this long, narrow strip on the left-hand side that I decorate because it just adds some height and it really does frame in the whole grotto area and make it just seem like really cozy and um, sec secluded, secretive, secluded. <laughs> Now that I have a decent amount of space to work with over here, I can add some third level cliffs where I can put some trees and I do carry some waterfalls down along the side there. So I, I'm really happy with how it turns out. This build took a lot longer than I was anticipating it to take and that was a little bit disheartening. I have a bad habit of really wanting to build things at night, but then when I build them at night, I feel like I don't see them properly until the next morning. And then when I looked at this one the next morning, I was like, wow, I am obsessed with this. I love it. So yeah, and the base of it was all this water terraforming that I did, which is like I've been saying, really not my strong suit. I don't really enjoy it, but Papa Guy was actually making me really enjoy water terraforming, which was the whole point of this island, was that I wanted an island that could feature a lot of water, and then my husband said, why not a jungle? And here we are today. Also, I've never really had like on Glenny and even on Okanda, the map is not like super intricate looking or fancy. It's just a lot of in-game pathing because I like in-game pathing. But Papagayu is actually looking pretty dynamic even in its early stages because of the amount of water terraforming and cliffscaping that I'm doing. So yeah, I just had to adjust my little hop spots here. <laughs> it's very hard to find out. Like it's hard to tell what you'll be able to jump to. And I actually end up adding a few more hop spots so that I can decorate more in front of Flora's house. Anyways, the map is looking really cool. I'm really happy with it. I can't wait to do more work on this island. Sorry, I just hit my mic. I don't know if you heard that. And we are done with the water terraforming after this little nook. Actually, I do add a little bit more, but we're done for now. We're gonna go run over and get Flora's house. Look how cute she is. I'm obsessed with her. She's such a, like there are some villagers that fit their personality so perfectly and Flora is definitely one of them. So I'm super happy to have her on my island, yay. Her house is also so cute and was like a large inspiration for this area. I know Biff was like, all over this spot and I actually considered moving Biff into this grotto because it kind of works for a hippo too to be in a little sheltered like what am I trying to say area with a lot of water <laughs> um, but Flora just fit it so perfectly also that little animation is like my favorite animation in the game we went forward to the next day so we could see Flora's house and I went to Treasure Island and got a bunch of trees which still was not enough trees can you believe it like I don't even have enough room for all of these trees <laughs> on my island elsewhere I have to actually like plant trees and grow them somewhere else on my island but even still I don't end up with enough so it's just easier for me to like go to a treasure island in the meantime and like pick up a bunch of trees but every treasure island only has so many trees so even if I grab every single tree that they have on the island I still have to make multiple trips to go and get more trees and it's insane Anyways, I am putting down sand paths wherever I want to put coconut trees and putting down bamboo trees just as you would and I'm actually fleshing out a lot of the space which feels really good making this pond a little bit smaller so that I can actually have the proper spacing for a tree and even then I didn't have a proper spacing for a tree so I had to move it over one spot. I mean, I think I'm finding actually with Papagayu that the trees 
You have to add a lot of trees to make it feel fully dense, but you have to add them in such a way where you're not just like covering the entire thing with trees. So it's kind of tricky. Even still, two of those trees that I just added end up getting moved over slightly and changed. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an interesting exercise because I've never done like a natural island before. Parts of my islands have been natural in the past, but I've never done an exclusively like a theme that really calls for a lot of nature like jungle core, but I'm loving it. Like honestly, it's a totally different brain space. I really have so much more respect for natural islands now. I did before too, but I mean, I think sometimes you can think when you see a natural island, from somebody who's done like a town core island and then the more like city vibes is that you don't realize how the tree placements factor into like every decision that you make with terraforming like you have to add enough cliff so that you can put a waterfall and a tree which can only be so close to each other so it, it gets a little bit tricky with that and there's actually a lot more planning and a lot more that goes into it than just like terraforming a little bit and doing some waterscaping and throwing down some trees like it's really cool I've been really enjoying it a lot and here are my beautiful plank codes you can find them in the description below I'm finally happy with the way that this plank path came out and actually my husband came in and helped me adjust the plank path even more from this and I am so happy with how it turned out in the first versions I had had um, more of an orangey wood and in this version I actually toned that down and made it more of a gray like a weathered look and I'm really a lot more happy with it and I did get that one path that everybody uses because guess what the reason why everybody uses it is because it's amazing it's literally so natural so cool looking I love the little leaf details on the sides I'm obsessed with this path and I'm using it here to break up the plank pathing because the plank pathing looks a little bit repetitive and very like unnaturally straight if you just use it by itself. I find if you break it up with something else, it looks a little bit nicer. I, I'm obsessed. Like I'm literally obsessed with this version of the path. It's so natural and I really hesitated to get it. I tried out a few different versions of more like darker dirt paths and I just came back to this one because it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm actually going to clip out some of this path laying because it gets a little bit repetitive and I'm just filling out some of the spaces underneath. Not really much to say about just adding in all of this pathing. It was a really large area and I kind of underestimated it when I endeavored to do this all in one video. In the future, I think I will break it up a little bit and maybe do some videos where I'm just like preparing the spaces or have the spaces prepared first. I don't know what you guys would prefer or if you don't mind seeing the longer style of build videos, let me know. I mean, I, I kind of struggle with like how much do I show of the build because the videos can get quite long if I just leave literally everything in. But I will start adding timestamps into my videos. That's what I would like to do from now on because I think that in time, YouTube is actually gonna start adding timestamps in automatically and I would like to have a little bit more control over the timestamps that are getting added to my videos so that you can also find, if you don't enjoy the terraforming as much, you could just skip to decorating or if you're only interested in like the custom path or something like that, I wanna make it flexible. Really, this is like, I want it to be inspiring for you so so that you can have the tools to use on your own island and maybe try out some different things that you weren't wanting to try out before. So yeah, and also so that you can see like when the final reveal is even, uh, just so that you know when you're watching the video when my outro starts because you might think that the build takes up the entire length of the video but it doesn't. I spend usually a few minutes at the end just discussing my thoughts about it and maybe the plans for the next build, maybe some little easter eggs that you only get when you stick around to the end of the video, who knows? <laughs> Of 
For this build, I really took Flora's house and overall aesthetic of just like pink really, really to heart. And I gave her like this pink secluded pop star residence and I absolutely love it to pieces. And it doesn't, I admit, really fit in with the narrative that I was going for with a jungle core island being like super hardcore, but honestly, it makes me so happy. So you know what? Some parts of Papagayu I've just decided might not be the most hardcore jungle you've ever seen in your life. It's still habited. People are still living there. Well, people, animals are still living there and thriving. Really, instead of burning myself out on trying to accomplish a theme, I'm just going to do what I enjoy. It was at this point in the build that my husband came in and made some suggestions on what to do with the custom paths to make it look a little bit more interesting, this one that I had designed. And he just suggested adding a few more little filler pieces on one of the squares. And I love the way that this came out. He's an artist, so I really respect his opinion when he wants to help me with the, all of these things on my island. It's really helpful. And I'm very happy with how these adjustments went. As you can see, it just adds a little bit more interest into my plank pathway, makes it seem a little bit more complete. I wasn't sure how to do that corner turn. And I asked him if he thought I should do it on all of the tiles to make that little extra piece. And um, he kind of liked it being asymmetrical and I kind of like it too, just being slightly different from one tile to the next. And here I am really struggling with what to do in this little narrow gap. I don't know, I need to leave it open to get to the hop spots. And so I end up actually creating more hop spots so that I don't have to um, leave that area open to jump to. And this was a very weird weather day on Papagayu. I've time traveled back to July just so that I can stay in summer for longer. I'm not a big fan of time traveling in large increments because like things change on your island quite a bit. And all of the bushes that I'm using here in this build, for example, have flowers on them, which will not be the way that it is in the final dream address. I don't think because I kind of like the look of none of the flowers being on the bushes. Um, but it is kind of nice in this area actually so maybe I'll use different bushes throughout and then have some colorful ones here and there Who knows? I'm not getting hung up on bushes quite yet But I didn't expect them to be flowering and that's why I have a thunderstorm happening on my island in just a second here <laughs> Uh, so it does get quite dark, which was unfortunate, but I do end up going forward to the next day for the final reveal anyways. I found this little puddle path that I thought would be a lot cuter than it actually is. It's just a little bit too bright, so I don't end up using it. I think I'm probably gonna find another puddle path. If anybody has an ideal puddle for the jungle, I would appreciate that. I know that uh, Nintentalk, actually, he used a puddle path that was really good, but it was depending on the season, the type of grass that you had on your island, the puddle would make it look like it was just wet grass. And I don't know if this season is actually where I'm going to be staying for my island in the final dream address, so I'm hesitant to use a puddle path like that. Who knew that I could talk about puddle paths for like 30 seconds straight? I can. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, and here I am finally adjusting the hop spots so that I can 
decorate right in front here with whatever I want because you'll hop right into the entrance of her house, which I love. I love that you can hop right up to her front door, which is super cute. And after this, we just have a couple of finishing touches, some little final things, and then I took a lot of this build actually off camera because it was getting quite long and you're seeing the basic structure of everything here. It's just the final details and there was a lot of little extra cliffs, cliff decorating and that kind of thing that I did comfy style on my couch just relaxing. So um, I didn't want this video to get crazy long, but I still wanted to show you the terraforming and the pathing and kind of the structure of this whole area. And I hope you enjoy. I will leave you to some music and I will see you in just a moment for my final thoughts. I've been waiting to see her in this area and this is the first time that I'm seeing her even close to it. So here is where the entrance to Flora's little grotto starts. I'm so excited. But if you come along this way, you can actually get a lookout across to her house. I keep going back and forth on that fan. That darn fan is like killing me. I love it and I hate it, but that's fine. This area gets a little bit relatively undecorated just because it was like, this build guys was like seriously a lot more epic than I anticipated. But yeah, you come up between these two little fences and I just love this little entrance way. I think it's so precious. And we have uh, just this little plank pathway that I made myself and I'm super proud of it. Then we, oh my gosh, Flora, 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 alert. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. Flora is in her neighborhood. I love seeing their little curtain open. Oh my gosh. I just think that this whole area suits Flora so much. This is quite girly actually and quite tropical vibes. You know what? I'm okay with that though. Sometimes you just gotta like do what makes you feel happy. For Flora especially, she's a peppy villager, she's bright pink, and I just wanted to make her like a little chill spot. She's got her surfboard out here on this little wooden pallet, like drying off after she comes out of the ocean because she is quite close to the beach. And then she has a little area where she can suntan with a little bit of privacy from all these nice trees. Yeah, it's very pink, it's very girly, it's very Flora. I'm obsessed. And I hope you guys liked it. Still a lot of little areas left to decorate. I had to end this build somewhere. So this is the point that we're ending it at. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the build. If you did like it, give it a like. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye everybody.